Hello, Namaste. I welcome you all to the 34th session of Guru Bodha. So this class is made available live for the our Easy Ayurveda weekly classes subscribers exclusively. But this class will also go online on YouTube. Also, uh, to begin the uh, this session on a good, positive, auspicious note. Sorry, this uh, this news piece is in Hindi. That Chavanprash we all know and we also adore one of the you know strongest and most popular medicine of Ayurveda. The, the origin story of Chavanprash begins with Acharya Chavana who who got old and who was, who was weak, but his energy was revived and uh, anti-aging therapy was given by Ashwini Kumaras. Now there is a park and an uh, Ayurveda pilgrimage center and an Ayurveda naturopathy center etc is coming up there uh, in the place where Acharya Chana was. Uh, so it's a very good positive note to start the session, sir. Definitely. If you observe this, the present government approach to all Indian culture related and heritage related, they will be pinpointed and picking up all those things which were left behind or unnoticed or not given the due respect. So if you observe that, it may be any pilgrimage centers like big Ayodhya, Mathura, Rukashi or whatever it is. Similarly, they are promoting yoga and as well as Ayurveda to the entire world. And definitely most of the even Ayurvedic uh, students are not knowing that it is from the Haryana, the place where the Narnal district, where Chavana Muni was having uh, all these um, days, uh, he was uh, doing uh, tapasu and all those things. And he was living there. But most of the time, a uh, government comes forward with this type of ideologies where they are going to even make an uh, Ayurveda wellness center along with the pilgrimage center and even a ropeway to make it a somewhat like a health resort as well as a ports resort then definitely it will be a very good uh, way to start and uh, promote uh, any unknown factors and unknown things of Ayurveda. Interesting approach that, that they taken is it's not just like treatment uh, this one. They are also including adventure sports uh, and making it uh, truly uh, a destination for picnic goers or uh, you know whoever wants to have rejuvenation they can also have rejuvenation there and also have their own part of entertainment so it's going to become a very tourist, big tourist hub because 75 crores are is going in, into that sir definitely definitely it will become one of the important spot and even the ayurveda students were asked to visit there and observe the things definitely it will be, it becomes in a holy spot and uh, this initiative must have been taken very long back but now the due credits are being given. That's one of the important things it's happening. And one of the positive things of these physical locations being given the due importance, long due importance and all is that I've seen that many of the Ayurveda concepts are, are hijacked by Westerners or other health science saying that oh it is their concept and you know Pranayama is, is now being promoted as something like a coherent, concurrent breathing and all. So that, that kind of hijacking can be avoided by making the big physical buildings like this, sir. See, definitely when we come up with such an idea that to, to promote a personality or his concepts as his works to the world, we need to give uh, due respect to his origin, where from where he was and what he was doing there. How is his area or the location, then how he got these ideas and how he understood the principles and concepts of the nature and how he incorporated all those things into the human life. So when we need to study all these things, when Chavana Maharshi has given such a beautiful work of Charaka Samhita and even uh, such type of Granthas are also speak about uh, Chavana Maharshi. And we know that Chavana Maharshi is one of the person who, who developed very early, that is called premature aging. So that is a very clear indication that where a Chavana Prasha has to be used, where there is a premature aging in those conditions, Chavana Prasha, if it is given, definitely it will going to improve the condition. So Acharyas have done their job and it is our duty to um, carry this legacy forward and definitely government is in the right direction. And continuing with the, in the two sessions previously, we were discussing about mango. Raw mango is uh, sour or astringent and uh, ripened mango is sweet. So they have entirely different things, uh, entirely different set of properties. 
so this is galita amra rasa that is squeezed mango juice so this is because it is such a juice it is uh, of course from ripe that's why it shows uh, balya or improving the strength immunity guru heaviness all these qualities sir see definitely this is squeezed mango juice is one of the commonest thing across the indian uh, peninsula and even the entire indian continent these areas it may be even pakistan bangladesh and these areas of sri lanka we have got varieties of mangoes and during summer it is one of the important uh, fruit and that's why we call it as uh, king of fruits the mango so it is one of the important uh, fruit and there are many many varieties out of that there are particular varieties which are very very sweet in nature once it is ripened so such mangoes are taken and the juice is prepared then definitely it is balya and to improve on that um, many people will make them into a smoothie by adding some other things into that sometimes some wrong combination like um, dugda is also added milk is also added which should be avoided otherwise it will become uh, definitely a, you know, in a small quantity it will going to improve the digestion and it is very good laxative and promotes uh, very good movement of the material inside the body but in a long large doses it may become somewhat heavy to digest and it may cause a certain indigestion so care should be taken to maintain that balance and this mango juice across india it's very commonly available and they can have it during summer to such an extent that almost everybody will definitely taste uh, the mango juice in summer there probably is no children in india who do not like a mango mm-hmm. and, and there are this am- amra can uh, amra khanda or mango candies again they are told uh, with the same i, I remember there was this mango mood or some mango candy that was available which which was very chewy and it was prepared with the direct mango pulps so it it again carries the same heaviness improving uh, nourishment and balya all those things so it is only the just uh, the mode of uh, presentation has been changed into amrakanda but still it is a mango and it will definitely give rise to the real qualities of what the mango is so but uh, definitely what type of mango is considered whether because we have got in the market uh, some chewy candies like kacha mango it is called as it will be green in color and it will be more sour rather than a sweet or a sweetish uh, sour in nature but there was a mango bite or something like it was there earlier and that is uh, very t- typically a um, uh, sweetish one and it is a pulpy one so they use the raw m- i mean mango pulp as it is to be available for chewing when we uh, chew the the mango ka ramra kanda or the mango candies so it is a definitely a better way of promoting and an improvised way of promoting what we call and of course nowadays uh, if anything to be is fed to the people uh, population we need to give a coin term and that we should be like you know for show then if you say it is a detoxifying then it will be somewhat sounding better similarly for uh, ramra kanda it may sound old and obsolete but if you for that you call it as a mango candy definitely people will cherish it and also this amra varta raw mango candies there again it is uh, probably it is more uh, related to sourish sweet uh, sir yeah definitely this is uh, once again by using the raw mango uh, juice they make it a thin layer or the foil type of material continuously pouring over that and making it sun dried and this will definitely make into a pulpy layered material and easily it can be crushed and taken just like a custard it will come out a very neat a pulpy a squeezy type of cake it will come and um, but it will be in the form of a layers and even sometimes such a layer just even for 3 to 5 mm thickness layer will be there and it is available in market and they are very ch- um, uh, swedish with a tinge of uh, you know uh, sourness in that by learning all the all these things we, we can make so many varieties of medicine forms may not be hardcore medicines we can make so many food products or like i think patanjali chaat masala has mango as an ingredient so a single herb or a single food substance can be used in a variety of uh, variety of ways and, and also it gives like whoever is planning to come up with ayurveda products it gives a big window of opportunities to pre- present the same a uh, herb in many different ways sir so definitely there are certain drugs which can be presented in different forms of uh, dosages so it may be sometimes it may be in the form of uh, swarasa or the juice it may be in the form of kashaya it may be in the form of chutney kalkas 
or it may be in the form of powder chewed so something like that there are versatile things are there only a few drugs are there in that uh, sun which will usually fit into all these uh, type of mode of i mean uh, different modalities are the dosage forms and amra is also one of the one and it can be even incorporated into such a level that a new new things can be done even with a mango if you add with a jeera or pepper something like that and make it as a you know chewy candy and it will be you know, very tangy in nature tangy in nature then that's type of uh, promotions it's very common and people will come out with all these things coming to the therapeutically probably uh, one of the important parts that is seed or seed kernel it is straight away astringent sir uh, definitely mango seed is astringent hence the it is uh, its powder is available in the market and it is extensively used in case of uh, diabetic people and even many times for the chardi and atisara and these sort of things but commonly used nowadays is for diabetes particularly with the mango seed because it's a potent kashaya rasa dravya and it is extensively along with that mango seed that even the the mango bark is also used for this purpose when we come to the yoga or uh, ayurveda medicines to treat the mango even siddha has many man- mango containing siddha products which are very frequently used in diabetes uh, like madhumi gari chuna and what not so to understand very clearly wherever mango is mentioned in a formula to be used either for diabetes or for diarrhea <clears throat> etc so there there the seed or seed kernel is the is the one to be used sir definitely where there is you require an astringent effect uh, something like it is thambana effect then it may be it may be diarrhea dysentery or may grahi like uh, lakshana as in ibs and something like that or it is only even to reduce the quantum of urine in case of diabetes so this in these areas if mango comes as a reference then it is always to be taken or understood as it's a mango kernel or the seeds and or else it is a mango bark it is not the mango fruit nowadays sugar free mango pulp has come that might indicate the sugar is not added to it or they will remove the glucose from the sugar we are not sure <laughs> i mean very weird see such type of things cannot be accepted it is once again a violation of natural phenomena few years back there was one company promoted one brand it was containing garlic and their promotion was this is a garlic pearl but doesn't have the smell of garlic then i straight away rejected that product saying that then what is the use of it one of the important material which is responsible for the smell in the garlic is allyl sulfide allyl disulfide and that is very much required for the treatment and if you remove that one itself then what is the use of such garlic removing something from the uh, mango or garlic and saying it as a mango or garlic doesn't sound right it should be having the proper rasaguna veera upaka what the previously it was naturally occurring in the plant at the uh, medicine it should be there it should not be just uh, sometimes when people said that uh, oil has promoted in the market uh, coconut oil propagated as chip chipa rahit tel so in hindi it they used to tell doesn't have any stickiness in that how can it possible a sneha dravya should have a stickiness if stickiness is not there then it is not this sneha dravya so they you they might have removed something from some portion of that from the coconut oil and they say it is very thin and it is non sticky so it when it is a non sticky then we can't keep it under the branding of oil this is one of the problem similarly the probably this sugar free or the sweetener free mango i don't know how they are doing maybe from kacha mango they are taking it and powdering it the raw mango they have been taken and it is done it is comparably less having uh, the fructose and the glucose portion in that that may be the thing they have had to take with, with respect to like coconut oil i mean let's not name the brand brand but uh, coconut oil not meant for oral consumption the nutrition component that is co- coconut hair oil not meant for oral consumption that, that is so contradictory title nutrition component that is there in the coconut oil which is beneficial for the you know oral body that snick that the, the same components that are useful for the hair and the skin also so if it is just non sticky and they would they would mix something like mineral oil to it so that you know the consumer likability increases so it, it becomes so away we, we start moving deviating from the shastras especially the core quality like mango and sweetness and the oil and the unctuousness of snigdata they should not be messed up with
Definitely. See, because of that, they have been given the sneha dravya. Sneha dravya means it should have the little stickiness or anxiousness. And if you remove that one itself, then what is the, where is the concept? And where is the quality? How do you expect that it, uh, all the results which are uh, attributed to that drug by the acharyas? It cannot expect that. You remove something from that and then use it the drug and uh, expect that it should give a result. No, it won't give a result. The drug should be used as a whole how it is. So that is the thing. Even in uh, hair oil, particularly coconut, even I prepare uh, hair oil for myself that is Kuntala Vardini. In that, uh, I prepare using all edible grade oils. It is from the coconut oil and as well as the tilatela or gingerly oil. I use edible oil. The reason is what we consume inside to the body, the same should be given applied to the body. So otherwise, most of the commercial brands, they do say that it is not for the oral consumption and that will be they just they want to keep the price less and definitely it is mixed with the mineral oil and if you don't mix it then it is not going to yield them the financial results so that's the reason they use it and that's the simply they will make one the name below that it should not it is not mentioned for human consumption or it is not for the internal usage so in the market also if you go and ask any vendor regarding a coconut oil or anything like you will ask whether it is for the deepam or for the consumption because for Deepam it is entirely different brand and for consumption it is entirely different brand. So this is the human nature. If you want to something to be offered to the God, offer something which is uh, deprived as or something which is uh, somewhat cheaper in it, and, uh, no, it should not be done. When you are offering something to your elders or God or Guru or something like, it should be of the natural one. It should not be deviated one. That's why people say that if you want to put a lamp or light a lamp and all those things, Use cow ghee is the most precious one. And coming to the going to the next question, so milk should not be added to amra or amra rasa preparations. There is like two set of uh, this one, like fruits with milk. Can they be ordered? Can can they not be added? Uh, in Sarak Samhita Sutta Sama, twenty fifth chapter, he gives a list of uh, all the sour uh, sour fruits which should not be mixed with milk. Sour substances, even amla is there, mango is there, etc. But in Asangradiya, uh, uh, seventh chapter, he gives straight away milk should not be mixed with fruits. Uh, so there is uh, there are two theories there, sir. See, it is uh, it's, no, one thing is straight away that is amla rasa should not be mixed with dugda or the milk. It is going to just spoil the candy things and it become it won't remain as a dugda or it won't remain as a juice whatever it is. But when it comes to mixing of fruit and uh, milk, why Acharya Vagbhat has given a prohibition there is very clearly these two are different set of uh, carbohydrates and protein combinations. They require a different set of digestive capacities. It should not be mixed together to confuse the system. Probably that is the reason they have said it should not be mixed. It becomes a viruddha in nature. Is mango heating? I have seen one case where the person got rectal bleeding after consuming mango pulp for a long period of time. Excessive mango for a longer period of time, even if it is sweet, not so very good for digestion. And also, it also depends on whether uh, whether it is ripe mango or unripe mango, sir. See, definitely unripened mango is more penetrative. If you use a ripened mango for a time being, it less effectiveness of this will be compared to less in causing a bleeding or heating. But Provided with all these statements, mango in general is Ushna in nature. The, the fruit portion what we eat, whether the same mango with the bark and the seed, then it is Kashaya, Shita in nature. So what they are using or consuming that should be understood. And if a person is Pitta Prakurti in nature and um, outside the season is also a Grishma type of thing, then you consume a lot of um, mango juice or mango related thing or even the panaka prepared out of mango or something like aperasam and all those things if you consume a lot of it then there is a chance of overheating and leading to bleeding this is happens yes sir and interestingly mango oil has also been explained but this is characteristically again astringent and bitter and also some sweetness is there useful in oral disorders as well sir see it's a, they are prepared a mango oil but i'm doubtful whether it is the extraction of oil from the mango or mango kernel or seed or it is adding a mango extracts into oil and making the oil siddha so that, that needs to be understood 
what actually they meant with uh, oil of mango so but still once again what uh, thing we are using it if they say it is kashaya astringent in nature then definitely they are using either kernel or the bark of the mango and they are treating it with oil are preparing it the oil with that so it, it definitely it will have can its gunas uh, like um, astringent properties and it is very potent in that so definitely it will be used in mukaroga like oral disorders where there is ulcer or something like that a bleeding or where there is a oozing something so it definitely it's uh, going to help in that way but provided every time there should be a tag on or a control on the dosage and the person a type of person one who is using it probably I mean, this astringent things are used uh, very frequently in uh, when we go to the dentists uh, if there is you know a sort of a bleeding or anything they will give some astringent liquid to apply so probably an astringent powder with mango and other such astringent things can be a very good product idea sir definitely when you want to dry up a area definitely we will try to put something which is astringent because astringent causes stabdata and oozing stops so that's why that area becomes dry if the area becomes dry then automatically that will be very good for the healing process and it is used externally for bleeding injury wounds etc so they are they are talking about bark flower leaves etc which are which are astringent dominantly and there is amrad mango juice etc yeah side effects again weakening digestion strength if it is sour or excessively taken pitta aggravation and bleeding also pitta affecting the eyes leading to eye disorders sir so anything which is done over definitely it is going to cause problems we should to take care of that what type of quantity and what type of quality of mango we should use it and how much should be taken if it is regularly taken then there is even vasculitis happens many some of the patient skin irritations develops and agni becomes diluted all these things are happen even sometimes the oral cavity ulcers will also created because of its ushtata regarding the oil that i mentioned that is there in kayadeva nigantu it says that sakara bhavam tailam kashayam swadu tiktakam probably a sesame oil based oil prepared out of it rather than that, that's the reason what i said it is not because the mango does not contain any as such any oil maybe some portion of aromatic oil may be present in its uh, young age in a unripe condition and even the leaves but extracting that one may not be sufficient enough to use it but it is a very easy to bring those uh, uh, qualities of mango into oil by cooking it with oil so probably that is the one uh, that's why i said it is a uh, siddha taila mango siddha taila or the amra siddha taila it cannot be from directly just like a coconut oil extracting oil no it is not like that yeah coming to next to very important uh, aspect of use of mango in varieties of medicines kataka kadaradi kashaya you know very useful in diabetes so a lot of diabetes and diarrhea targeted here sir so definitely see where there is something which is required to the body and it is going out or oozing in it may be urine along with that glucose or it may be even amo i mean satisara or it may be menstrual bleeding or it may be anything like which is oozing in nature or increasing its um, output rather than the normal in all those areas these mango preparations or mango containing drugs are used and definitely in all these conditions I mean the yogas mango seed kernel and mango bark is the one which is used because that has that particular uh, potential to do a very good important uh, therapeutic outcome in case of gastrointestinal diarrhea or even still bleeding and such conditions it may be even lycoria yes sir and uh, bidyanath ashokar ashokarista as such does not have mango but bidyanath has makes uh, bidyanath ashokarista special use in manner manner bleeding hemorrhoids etc and then uh, feme a lot of uh, gynecological gynecological syrups used in lycoria and manner they contain that wilwam tablet uh, prepared from skm siddha and ayurveda company uh, Uh, and madumega kudine churanam even it is very famous in siddha as well and uh, like at all na- tooth powder nagarjuna tooth powder contains it so very versatile there sir so once again all these are targeted based on its kashaya rasa then it is not the ripened mango it is kachcha mango or the unripened mango and mango seed kernel or even the bark 
these potentially I mean have these particularly kashaya rasas in these areas in this plant. So that is being taken and utilized for the various conditions. As for the nutrition part and directly consuming, then it is always a fruit and that is entirely different qualities in that. The last slide regarding mango here, MG tone syrup, very famous from Charak has it. Dabar Hazmula, Maha Am, Imli Candy has it. Mutra Sangani Kwata has it and Grahani Mihira Taila also has it. Sir. So definitely, so once again, all these preparations are targeted based on the kashaya of unripened mango and that is mango seeds and these things are used. Patanjali has gone into using mango in a different direction. Patanjali Patak Jaljira powder, Chat Masala powder, Patak Hing Goli tablet, all these are from Patanjali. They are going to the direct consumer here. Sir. Definitely, this is what they are doing and it is a kacha mango, uh, the unripened one, which is having more sore in nature. Here, for this purpose of improving the agni or helping in the digestion, and uh, this type of condition and even the chaat masala containing uh, ama or it is very common in northern India there is they will get in the market amchur uh, very commonly available any uh, preparations made out of bindi or the lady's finger while doing preparing that sabji that amchur is used amchur it's very commonly available so this you know, concept as well as uh, traditional knowledge from the Ayurveda they are taken into and clubbed and marketed by the Patanjali in that name Pachak Jaljira or something like that. They will, because Ayurveda very clearly suggested during Grishma and Varsharutu, everybody will have a lesser Agni. So in order to improve the Agni, then Pachak Jaljira and such type of things are promoted during summer and that will going to help the improve the digestion. And uh, coming to the classical categorization, Charka mentioned this in uh, Hrithya, Chardi, Nigrahana. And there is also a famous Amradi Varga that I mean, the whole group of ingredients are categorized in the name of mango. See, Charaka actually very clearly said Hridya. So whenever uh, the, the term Hridya has been attributed to Amra, keep it in mind it is the unripened mango which is sore in nature because Amra Raso Hridya Nam. It is not the Kashaya. Kashaya Rasa is again as the Ahridya it is. So you cannot take it as a Hridya. So whatever here Acharya says is Hridya, then his intention of telling is only towards the, the pulp of unripened mango which is sore in nature that is hridya in nature chardi nigrana is the same thing unripened mango pulp but whereas it comes to mutra sangraniya and purish sangraniya definitely what their intention of selling uh, or attributing a quality is to the mango it is for the seed kernel or the bark of the mango it is not the fruit of the mango and almost in uh, amradi varga and that naming uh, nigantu is started with that because we all know that uh, Amra is considered as the king of fruits. That's the reason uh, they have kept the important and the main drug of the group and based on that naming has been done. And there are a lot of uh, trees and uh, species with fruits and all those things They are grouped under Amra Di Varga. So, I mean, in, in the like Haritakya Di Varga is there, uh, which starts with like Haritaki, then Amla, Amla, Amla Ki Vibhitaki are explained. So, popular and probably efficacious that is the criteria for naming that in the with the name of the main herb there sir main group drug in that group are the versatility and the importance of the drug that has been made as a captain or the group leader so that is the reason that amradi varga it contains it's not only simply amra it is amradi adi is there and that most of them with the type of uh, sore and uh, sweet type of fruits and with large big quality i mean big trees such type of things are grouped under Amradi Varga. Thank you, sir. So we are ending the mango topic here. If you have any questions, please on the chat, please uh, type them. We'll answer them. So coming to the carnivore only diet. So this question came just today, so I just included it here. So a diet that has become very popular in the US and elsewhere is a carnivore diet. And many big celebrities, even scientists, computer scientists and all they follow this so this diet is eating red meat only so they make steak and they eat it so they view grains vegetables fruits as causing all inflammation and disease and this is very confusing as there are many testimonials of people on this diet uh, reversing diabetes and other chronic diseases 
can you speak about this type of diet from an ayurveda perspective see very clearly ayurveda has suggested sarva rasa abhyasam arogyam all the rasa should be there in a diet and if you are eating only a protein or something like that red meat only it doesn't contain the required things then ultimately you may end up in some deficiency so that cannot be whole heartedly just uh, blocking anything or uh, putting a restriction and all those things it is totally absolute i mean um, it is not totally I, i can't understand or i cannot accept that we need to understand everything should be there in that diet that's what acharya said all the rasas six rasas should be there in that every day whatever we eat it so if you simply eat only red meat i don't think so it may going to help you and even we have got plenty of uh, articles present in the web uh, stating stating that red meat is also one of the important thing for causing cancers then where to go how to go simply eating red meat they are most vulnerable for many type of colon cancers and even the cancers of the breast is also involved there there are plenty of such issues are there but all these diseases are the complex nature of the body as well as the ability of the body to fight it back and when it is failed to fight it back all these factors fall in line and they are responsible for the pathogenesis of any disease it's simply blaming on simple one diet or vegetable which is causing the inflammation and all those things that is a totally uh, unworthy statement to be considered there are many books written on how i mean having a non vegetarian diet would cause cancer and other things especially i profoundly remember a how not to die book in that uh, if if somebody reads it probably he is going to stop uh, eating even egg for that matter so in that he explains that how chickens are killed or how they are killed before they are used in uh, preparing chicken and then all these hens or cocks they are killed with a kind of a hook and they are punctured through the stomach area of the animal and that's how it, the cock dies but when it dies and it is punctured some of the intestinal fecal material also gets stuck into the meat and also ever uh, clean in cleanliness and uh, hygiene is maintained if the fecal material is uh, inadvertently mixed with the chicken and he, he goes on giving a lot of research paper explaining about you know what are the hazards of that and uh, there is a book called as life span in, in which uh, uh, Har- harvard professor david sinclair explains that ha- having meat less diet is probably the way to go as far as extending our aging is concerned meaning excessive meat can cause increased aging definitely excessive meat or only meat diet definitely not only causes early aging it is also responsible for various diseases related to heart and it is responsible for various uh, cancers to originate in the body so that type of extreme things only total vegan only total di- these are all uh, nonsense we need to combine as per our traditions and our uh, principles which we are following since by birth are the families where we are born in we will be having an uh, affinity towards the diets and the places where we uh, originated or where taken birth so that things has to be incorporated but today uh, we are in a such a thing that if you go to across the world we try to taste and uh, try to customize ourselves to uh, the different type of diets so that is maybe because of um, practicality or it may be just out of curiosity just you want to try all those things but from the point of health eating any anything only one type of thing it is always not good it cannot be giving you all the required elements for the sustenance of life wherever we go or whatever we do culture is so very important we should stick to our culture that we get from our parents grandparents etc whether it can be our lifestyle or our religion or worship or even our food also sir definitely these are all uh, driven by the dna what we inherit from our parents that needs to be given due respect if you want to just change the diet for the type of any other things then there may be lot of issues may develop inside your body you may become prone for many type of cancers of course there are sporadic cancers which can occur to anybody without any thing and of course it is very clearly established that every person will have uh, cancer cells in him in throughout his life span either five to six times but every time your system will be so weakened and it is clever intelligent it catches those uh, cells and destroys it 
but only when our system fails to catch it then we develop cancers so this is what the messages has been given or even the studies have shown so it is better not to fix only that to only meat diet or only total vegan diet all these are going to definitely cause lot of deficiency issues and there are some worst pathologies may arise out of it that is not expected and that's a reason we need to take the diet which has all the taste all the rasas and all the fibers qualities proteins carbohydrates whatever and what not else including even the fats there are fats which is required for the body people say that uh, total cholesterol free diet it is bogus body makes the cholesterol without the cholesterol we can't believe every cell wall is made up of cholesterol we need cholesterol then they were categorized as a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol there is no good cholesterol or bad cholesterol you maintain the particular type of uh, thing consume the which is required for your body and try to maintain it. there are only certain people they are having uh, the hereditary problems that they tend to develop the higher triglyceridemia their uh, all other cholesterol pattern will be normal but their triglycerides will be higher there are people like that particularly the vegans so care should be taken to improve all those areas wherever it is possible a good quality dietary things to be taken from the diary something should be consumed people nowadays say that uh, diary should be avoided diary because they are thinking of the westernized that cows the jersey cows and all those things which give 30 liters of milk and something like that per day it is not required there are uh, desi cows the indian style of cows and that gives you a one type of milk or a two type of milk see these qualities they have changed it and they said that is good to body because they produce very little one and they eat particular type of uh, grass and all those things uh, nowadays uh, the, the, for the commercial purpose we are uh, feeding the cows with a uh, lot of uh, fodder chemical fodders and even the manufactured things and uh, we are interested in getting more and more milk and that type of things are not good to the body but if we say in desi cow milk then it is definitely good and even the grutha that's why acharya shishuta has very clearly said nitya rasayana what are those things very clearly says dugdha and ajya that is grutha grutha and dugdha both are ajasrika rasayana every day it should be consumed by everyone that's what acharya's message is yes sir as well you told good cholesterol bad cholesterol and ldl is like blamed for all the negative things and uh, when i studied the, this cholesterol when the liver is producing all this cholesterol ldl is is the one which goes into the brain and uh, provides nourishment it goes to, to the all the tissues and uh, repairs the damage of the tissues makes the cell, rebuilds the cell wall makes new cells so uh, so there is no uh, concept of bad cholesterol or good cholesterol just with the diet and uh, somebody has written that we don't get any fiber from eating a red meat diet only so that's very true and that's why this okasatma concept has been explained and another thing is that this shad rasa that they explained probably they also mean that we should have all the varieties uh, sir like i mean good amount of proteins carbohydrates water fat fiber minerals everything salt everything should be there in our diet so probably shatrasa signifies that also definitely that's the intention of uh, saying the concept in a different words is that shatrasa is sarvarasa abhyasam arogyam that's what they have said they never suggested only eat only madhur rasa madhur rasa is very good to the body but doesn't uh, going to cause mother only eat madhur rasa if ati uh, madhur rasa sevana is there then there are also there are a lot of diseases quoted by acharyas it may be like obesity it may be rudroga and it may be even uh, diabetes so many things they have explained yeah i mean milk in us is not great creating hormonal imbalance in young kids it, it all depends on uh, how the cows are uh, fed and what not and moving on to the next topic we covered kapikachu in great detail so there was a question like uh, kapikachu <coughs> with this uh, a very good vatahara and also has its effect on has a nourishing effect on the brain tissue and uh, nerves so can kapikachu be mixed with shirabala 101 or co prescribed with shirabala 101 uh, for neurological issues and is it also good for neurological issues there sir definitely it's already available in the market pentake produces a drops called neurocare which is a fortified shirabala oil with including of ashwagandha kapikachu and these type of nervine tonics and that is very good for the neurological conditions 
Tapikachu is one of the one which acts on the central nervous system as well as it's on the aphrodisiac front. So both the areas it takes very neatly and gives a very convincing results. Uh, yes, Mona Bhaji, you have raised your question, uh, raised your hand. Can you please yeah. go ahead? Um, thank you, doctor. Good morning, both of you. So I had a question. You said about the cow ghee uh, is one of the best. Now, what if you do not have any excess close by to go to a farm? Because we don't know when you get some pre-made cow ghee in the stores, how they have made or whether they are really made from the cow milk or not. So in that situation, how do you tell your client what is the substitute about the cow ghee? Because it's hard sometimes to find the real cow ghee. See, it's a very easy. It's not so difficult. Nowadays, everything available online. There are institutions which are preparing cow ghee in a very natural way without adding any chemicals or not processing anything in that. And that can be available on that. So if you want to have a doubt whether they have done it like that or not, how to understand them then. So similarly, we go to laboratory and we give our blood and expect that certain tests should be done. Are we going to observe whether they are they're using our blood and giving the results? At the end of the day, when yeah. they give the um, certificate, I mean uh, document saying so and so is present in your blood, we accept it. Similarly, there should be some faith try to select a good person and a good company which is existing for a long time or doing good thing or it may be even a small one but it is going genuinely try to find out if definitely you will get one or the other such things and nowadays the transportation and mechanism of postage and all those things are very good and you can courier facilities you can get it anything across globe anything anywhere so it is not a big issue and uh, no question nothing can replace cow ghee there is no substitution for that and also in the context of US, so I mean, if there is a scarcity, it also presents an opportunity. So if, if somebody is not making a cow ghee is not original, authentic cow ghee is not available, it's not hard. Like, I mean, in Indian households, you know, our, our mothers prepare cow ghee on a, you know, on a very frequent basis. And, and it's also like whoever is uh, watching this, just prepare for, for, for example, cow ghee example I'm giving go to the market or go to the people who, uh, who rear cows, get the milk, uh, prepare curd and then prepare butter and prepare the ghee out of it, record the whole thing and you can stream it live in Facebook, Instagram, etc. and put a crazy high price on it, it will sell. So if, if there is a scarcity, there also presents an opportunity. So. Definitely, always uh, it is based on the demand and supply. And uh, in uh, American context, if you say there is a non-availability, I don't think so. We have, I think in our group, when Mrs. Sandeep is also there, no? he can give, uh, produces a lot of good quality ghee. And across, definitely he, he can able to give them a service if you want really any cow ghee. He can supply. I don't think so. It will be a problem. Yeah, Sandeep Agarwal is, Thank he's, you. Yeah, Sandeep Agarwal, he's from Pure Indian Foods. Daily he, he travels miles together to collect ghee, uh, ghee from the you know, cow ranch and to get that. So if there's a will, there's a way anyway, definitely there. And uh, a question has come, a question about wrong food combinations. Uh, for, so this comes to the premise that salt and milk are contraindicated with each other. For breakfast, we grew up eating salty breakfast like poha, upma, etc. But always had milk along with it. Would that be considered as a bad combination? So give it, to give a little bit of context, when two ingredients are told as wrong, those two ingredients should be used dominantly if it is a yoga or if it is a preparation or they should be used alone. Only then it can be considered as wrong, sir. See, definitely when we say that it is a Viruddha Ahara, the non-conducive combination, it's very clearly milk and salt. So we don't put salt to milk and drink it, isn't it? So it is something uh, salt which is put into the making of uh, poha or something like that for the preparation, but that poha doesn't contain only the salt. It also has some sourness, some nimbu is also added to that, lemon and some even the, um, what do you call, uh, for, for the pungency, something like pepper or something like that we added or even uh, capsicum is added. So it is not simply the uh, only the what we call salt in that. 
so along with that salt and but it is not directly putting this into the milk followed by we are eating i mean drinking milk so it doesn't make any sense but only thing is directly putting salt to milk and consuming it is contraindicated it is not good yes sir and i hope the doubt is clarified there i mean we have been addressing the wrong food combinations in uh, many different uh, ways and next next question is whenever there is a hair oil problem and i say that this oil is good say bringa malka taila is good then somebody would eventually ask can we mix durdura patradi taila to it then i would say that yeah it can be mixed then somebody would come and say can we mix kuntala kanti oil to it and then some people use three or four or mix it type of oils they mix it and keep it and they apply such an oil to hair what do you make out of this practice so very clearly there is a concept in ayurveda that is called as yamaka sneha where two varieties of snehas are combined or two varieties of oils are combined or oil or majja or grita something like that it is combined so whenever grita and oil is combined then we call it as kolambu in very popularly in india in particularly in kerala but it is always for the external usage so whenever we combine two different oils it only to impart the efficacy of the combination and other part of it there are a set of commercial ideas into that that when we make a combination of 3 or 4 in a particular proportion and it is available with only us then it is for the capturing of the customers for that purpose so it is been done but as a point of its efficacy definitely yamakasneha has some role in holding the area of particular the trichology or the hair related with the hair and uh, you can use combinations but for the preparation base oils if you mix two or three types then it is okay or even mixing the kuntala vadini and kuntala kanti or even with neeli prungama or prungamala kadi into combination brahmi amla then such combinations we don't know because it acharyas have never said this combinations and we don't know what happens with that but unfortunately unfortunately it won't cause you any untoward incidents but whether it is improves the efficacy that is a big question mark while preparing the oil if you use the chemical snehas then it is good it is extracted after cooking but two differently cooked oil uh, mixing together in different proportions they may go in hand in hand and uh, directly is uh, helping or it may become straight away contrast and also rather than aiming for one universal herbal oil for hair fall or to regrow hair or to address the gray hair or, or to even address the dandruff everything knowing what the root cause is with the hair what the issue is hair what the problem is there with the hair and then zeroing on one particular herbal oil maybe two would be good but mixing everything and hoping that a combination of all these things would somehow make our hair better is a little bit exaggerated sir so. see you cannot have a uniform result out for every cases so there are the hair fall which may be due to premature hair fall which may be due to deficiencies which may be due to excessive heat type of material you are consuming or excessive androgen activity testosterone activities thyroid issues endocrine issues deficiency in calcium dandruff so many things deficiency in iron all these will lead to hair fall and dandruff and on the nowadays the excessive use of shampoos that is one of the reason for why we get always uh, irritation in the scalp uh, because we try to remove the basic essential oil from the scalp it becomes totally dry and then it is becomes totally dry definitely the rukshata will occur and rukshata leads to always itching so we need to put some oil onto the head and keep it a little bit sneha yukta then it will not be having dryness but like that when there is a um, um, dandruff something like that rich is scalp because of that hair fall is there then we need to address the two condition we need to avoid the dandruff and we need to even bring back the lost hair so in that situation we can combine two oils like brungamal ka taila and durdura patradi taila so both will in a combination may take uh, good positions Or, but that needs to be evaluated with the studies because we don't have such data available already and also like whenever this oils are prepared or the taila paka is done certain number of herbs are mixed with oil sesame oil coconut oil and what not 
and then they are mixed with kashaya or any such liquids and boiled together and then in a particular moment when the, the the total oil is prepared they are filtered it's called as thailapaka in ayurveda so each oil will have its own unique thailapaka i mean coming from the pharmaceutical uh, point of view so mixing too many oils will also mess up with the you know, how they would combine with each other in terms of uh, perfect uh, combination is also a questionable there sir see while preparing the thailapaka while doing thailapaka itself you have added two thailas which is a combination definitely by cooking the entire process definitely it won't uh, harm the final outcome of the product but when two different oils cooked in a two different modalities and they are once again at the before using they are combined together then definitely we can't express or we can't understand or we can't even acknowledge that it is a right kind of thing but there are certain exceptions like prunga malaka adding with durdura patradi to some extent it gives a result so something like that there are some proven but most of the combination which we do it we on our own it is just entirely of the based on the yukti of the physician and there is a question here nowadays in tamil nadu some doctors are asking to consume oil in a mixer form like a little bit of coconut oil sesame oil and peanut oil mixed and used for cooking is that a healthy way sir <laughs> it's not like that it should not be ayurveda never says that to mix all the oils and prepare it for the cooking and all those things very clearly a one type of sneha should be used yeah, and definitely and, and, and we did a class on sushrutas explanation of oil so pushna thailas one set and shita thailas i mean if everything is mixed up it becomes so very I mean, even for the taste also it may not be good i assume and this the viruddha ahara then you should not be mixing all these oils together and we have a very much accustomed practices across the world if you take it from the point of context of india itself entire northern india consumes sarshapa thaila mustard oil uh, entire gujarat consumes to some extent the groundnut oil if you go to karnataka then there is a ground oil and this oil nowadays everywhere palm oil and along with that if you go to yeah, tamil nadu then there is gingelly oil if you go to kerala then it is coconut oil so there is a versatility is there and depending upon the areas and the our customaries and traditions along we are using these two different type of oils but while cooking it still mix everything i don't uh, suggest that that is the right type of thing to be done better to go with the advice of our grandmas rather than going yes. and and also uh, last question of the day would it be acceptable to add essential aroma oils to classical formulations just a few drops because many clients complain of a smell the concept of gandha dravyas were there even previously also sir yeah that can be done no issues with that aroma oils of different oils can be given something and make it something like you know acceptable to the client but generally when we prepare oil with some herbs and this one definitely it has its own aroma that aroma has to be appreciated and you want to have that aroma in a same manner then it is that's what you eat idlis with a chicken masala then you, because we want we are very much fond of chicken masala so you want even at least been with chicken so such type of combinations when we make it we cannot justify it is the right type or scientific type of things it requires lot of observation and even the data which is generated will give you a lot of information but to develop such data it requires in many many years of understanding and observation so it's a huge task but but sir sir i mean adding like two to three drops of an essential oil like lavender essential oil to one liter of prepared oil uh, herbal oil should not be a big no, that's not a, that's not a big issue that can be done that can be done. And, and also to further the idea the purpose of the oil should meet with the purpose of the essential oil also for example uh, you know lavender essential oil is used in case of depression probably that can be added one or two drops maybe to brahmi thaila so such type of combinations of one or two drops in that before application and con- just to give an aroma therapy something like that our aroma will give you some conduciveness and some calmness or acceptance from the patient or client side so for that purpose it can be done no issues okay uh, with that we come to the end of this session thank you very much for all the participants to come up with the interesting questions and thank you guru rajesh sir clarifying all of our doubts thank you thank you janardan and thank you all of you for patience hearing and even participating in the conversation thank you all see you in the next class next sunday namaste